If you were anything like me in the 8th grade, you might have tried to use a Ouija board to see who had a crush on you or try to freak out your friends by pretending not to move the piece. Thank God I was never sent any life altering messages from the beyond, but there are certainly many people who have not been so lucky. So if you're looking to get a little freaked out by some of the most terrifying messages from the beyond, well my friend, you have come to the right place. So grab your holy water or whatever demon repellent you prefer and let's get started. First up in our number 10 spot, text messages. According to a Catholic priest named Stephen Rossetti, demons are managing to figure out how to adapt to our new technologies at an incredible rate. In the olden days, sure, you inhabit a body, scream, convulse, terrorize, I mean that was pretty much what the job entailed. But as the world changes, so do the demons and how they torture us. We might be familiar with entities flickering lights, but according to Rossetti, they can text through the possessed soul if they choose to. Rossetti claims he has personally seen three cases in which a demon has texted the family or friends of the possessed person, the worst of which read, her torments start now, priest all night, we will make her bleed. Lead. Ooh, I couldn't find what happened to this poor possessed girl after, but considering Rossetti claims to perform 20 exorcisms a week, I'm hoping he was able to save her from the terrifying threats. Next up at number 9, Patrick Antle. As Patrick tells it, when he was about 17, he decided to sneak out of the house so that he could attend a party. Now, he got out of the house and made it to the party just fine, but it was what he saw returning home that shook him to his core. At about 2 am, he was walking down a familiar street when all of a sudden he saw a house that he swears had never existed until that night. He noticed that the garage door was open, and just when he was about to keep moving, two beating red eyes appeared in the darkness. Terrified, he froze, and then all of a sudden, like from a nightmare, he claims he heard a gnarly voice inside his head saying, turn away now or your body will burn in the deep fires of hell, and your soul will be tormented for eternity. He said his body immediately was freed and he sprinted home as fast as he could. After about a month, he worked up the courage to walk down that street once again, and when he did, the mysterious house was gone and he never saw it again. Coming in at number 8, Message in an Exorcism Exorcisms are the most tried and true way that the church has dealt with demonic possession, and though many terrifying things can happen during one, a demon speaking through their victim is at the top of the list for me. About 30 years ago, an American televangelist was on his way to Russia to help a possessed woman, and for some reason, I have no clue why, he decided to bring along his roughly grade 3 aged son. When he arrived, she was already making strange noises, had bloodshot eyes, and would randomly convulse at a moment's notice. He wasted no time before beginning to try and rid the woman of the demon, and according to the son who witnessed the entire thing, during her exorcism she turned to look directly at him and in a deep manly voice said, This is my domain. You are not allowed here. You will suffer the lake of fire for your heresy. Luckily for her, the exorcism appeared to be successful, but the words haunted his son for the rest of his life. Life. Next up at number 7, Demon Defeated. This one is kind of a different vibe than any of the others on this list, but still unsettling all the same. Back in 1840, Gottlieban Dietis, I may have butchered that, a devout Lutheran woman suddenly started to worry people in her village. Concerned she was being abused a doctor decided to stay the night in her house to make sure she was alright, and after one night it was clear that Ditus and her house were haunted by something truly evil. Ditus said she began experiencing the ghost of a terrifying woman holding her dead son haunt her each night, and people of the town said the possessions kept getting worse and worse. Eventually she got the attention of Reverend Bloomhard, who claims the woman demon would speak directly through Ditus to him when he tried to perform exorcisms, but still he persisted. Eventually he was successful, and upon ridding Ditus of her demons, Bloomhard swears the demon screamed, Jesus is Victor! 
right before exiting her body for good. Coming in at number 6, a death sentence. More and more it seems demons are deciding to contact people through our devices. Now, they're known to reach us through texts or emails, but in 1980, this demon managed to hack into a Commodore CBM 8032. Manfred Bowden, the owner, was working on a biorhythm program when all of a sudden he noticed numbers and figures appearing that he was not inputting. Lines of text he had already programmed were changing and then, like from a horror movie, a sentence started to form. It read, I am here, you will die Manfred, 1982, accident, August 16th, 1982, yours. Klaus. Bowden was entirely freaked out, but the entity wasted no time before sending another saying, heart attack. Ugh. This sent Bowden into a spiral awaiting for the fateful day. Thankfully, he did not experience the fate that he feared, but after that, he became obsessed and started trying to contact entities from other dimensions. But he never received messages quite as clear as his alleged death sentence. Coming in at number five. Mirror Mirror. Back in 2017, a now deleted Reddit account shared a spooky encounter from when they were about 11 or 12. According to the user, they were staying with their grandparents, and although they loved staying there, there was one very unfortunate bit their spare room was in the basement. According to the user, every time they stayed over, stranger and stranger things started happening. Things began flying across the room, objects would move from where they had last left. It, and they would even find crumbs from snacks that they didn't eat. But most terrifying of all were the messages left on the mirror in the middle of the night. One night they saw something that particularly spooked them and they went up to the mirror to get a closer look. In the mirror's reflection they saw something behind them but when they turned around nothing was there. They looked back into the mirror to see the sheets moving behind them and thankfully they had the smarts to get the hell out of there. From there on out they they slept on the couch when they visited their grandparents, as it was clear something had already decided the guest bedroom belonged to them. Coming in at number 4, Annalise Michael. A truly tragic story from 1975, Annalise Michael is one of the most well known stories of demonic possession to this day. She grew up a devout Christian, but strangely one day when she was 16 she passed out and when she woke up she was never the same again. Originally she was diagnosed with epilepsy and depression after a series of terrifying convulsive episodes. However, Annalise believed she was possessed and her and her family began looking for alternate methods to heal her, ceasing to take all prescribed medications. After a long search with many turning them down, they found a priest who agreed to perform exorcisms on her and in fact ended up performing a whopping 67 sessions over 10 months. During one of the exorcisms, a demon spoke through Annalise saying, People are stupid as pigs. They think it's all over after death. It goes on. As the months went by, she stopped eating as the demons instructed her and eventually died of malnutrition. The priests involved were ultimately convicted with manslaughter and condemned for encouraging the young woman to stop her medication in the first place. Next up at number 3. A Ouija board. While on an overnight school trip to a haunted house, one girl says she received a bone chilling message from a spirit. Now, I'm not sure exactly whose idea it was to take a group of young girls to a haunted house as a school trip, but alas, here we are. According to the girl, somewhere around 4 pm, they decided to try out a Ouija board, and I mean, what could go wrong there? She claims they spoke to a girl who died in the 1800s, and when they asked the spirit to show herself, it said, simply replied saying 11.35. Jump ahead a few hours and at exactly 11.35, the teacher saw a girl standing in the window staring right at her. The lights flickered and a constant loud knocking was heard all over the house. They asked the board if it was her, to which it replied, Yes. The next morning, they were all really freaked out about what had happened, but thought it was all behind them. That was until they found the house scattered with notes all torn from the teacher's notebook that read, 
come back soon. The girls booked it out of there and never returned. Coming in at number two, a visit from the grave. In 1977, the Chicago Fire Department was called to put out a fire at an apartment. Once they were able to put out the flames, they were horrified to find the body of Teresita Bassa, a 47 year old woman under her mattress with a knife through her chest. There were no signs of forced entry and so eventually the case just went cold. That was until one night when Remy Chua, a co-worker of Basa at the hospital, was visited by her ghost in a dream. Chua said Basa revealed the face of her killer and that it was another hospital employee named Alan Showery. From there, Chua says she began to be possessed by Basa and using Chua as a vessel, the entity said, tell them Al came to fix my television and then he killed me. Eventually they were able to convince authorities to take another look at the case and Alan was indeed eventually charged with 22 years in prison for killing Teresita. So maybe not a demon leaving a message but certainly a message from the beyond no less. And last up in our number one spot haunted toys. One couple named Mark and Marianne say that they experienced one of the most terrifying moments in their lives when one night for whatever reason a demon attached itself to some of the toys belonging to their son. The toys began moving around the room almost as if they were dancing with each other when suddenly they would start hurling towards the couple out of nowhere. Soon the entity took over a magnetic doodle board and began leaving threatening messages saying die die you're dead and RIP. As the demon continued it began taking over their computer sending vulgar and untraceable emails to the couple promising Marianne that I'll come for you when you're asleep and that she was going to die today. Maybe most terrifying of all was when they would be out of the house. Marianne would get phone calls that when she answered were completely silent, but the source of the call was their landline inside their locked and empty house. The nightmare continued for nearly a year until one day, out of nowhere, it stopped completely and never returned again. Thank God. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Kennedy. If you liked it, make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.